Let's go back to the early days. What did the formation of the Milky Way galaxy look like? Or maybe we want to start even before that. What did the formation of the universe look like? Well, we scientists believe there was the Big Bang, some big beginning. <laughs> but what is important for my work, and I think that's what we're going to talk about, is what kind of elements were present at that time. Mm -hmm. So the Big Bang left a universe behind that was made of just hydrogen and helium and tiny little sprinkles of lithium. And that was pretty much it. And as it turns out, it's actually quite hard to make stars or any structure from that. That's fairly hot gas. And uh, so the very first stars that formed prior to, to any galaxies were very massive stars, big stars, 100 times the mass of the sun. And they were made from just hydrogen and helium. So big stars explode pretty fast after a few million years only. That's very short on cosmic time scales. And in their explosions, they provided the first heavier elements to the universe because in their cores, all stars fuse lighter elements like hydrogen and helium into heavier ones. And then that goes all the way up to iron. And then all that material gets ejected in these massive supernova explosions. And that marked a really, really important um, transition in the universe because after that first explosion, it was no longer chemically pristine. Mm -hmm. And that set the stage for everything else to happen, including us here talking today. <laughs> so what do you mean by pristine? So there's a, a whole a complex soup of elements now, as opposed to just hydrogen, helium, and a little bit of lithium. Yeah, so after the Big Bang, just hydrogen and helium. We don't really need to talk too much about lithium because the amount was so small. Mm -hmm. um, and after these very first stars formed and exploded, they um, the, the heavier elements like carbon, oxygen, magnesium, iron, all of that stuff was was suddenly present in the gas clouds. Uh, in tiny amounts only, very tiny amounts. But um, that actually helped, especially the carbon and the oxygen, to, to make the gas cool. These atoms are more complicated than hydrogen. That's just a proton. And so it has cooling properties, can send out photons outside of the gas cloud. So the gas can cool. And when you have gas that, that gets colder and colder, you can make smaller and smaller stars. So you can fragment it and clump it and, and turn it into stars, like, like the sun. And the cool thing about that is that when you have small stars like the sun, they have a really long lifetime. Mm -hmm. So those first low mass stars that formed back then are still observable today. That is actually what I do. I try to find these early survivors because they tell us what the gas looked like back then. They have preserved that composition of these early gas clouds, the, the chemical compositions, um, until today. So I don't need to look very far. Uh, into the universe <laughs> to study all the beginnings, I can just chemically analyze the oldest stars. And it's like unpacking everything that, that happened back then. It's very exciting. So to just reiterate, so in the very early days, in the first few million years, there was giant stars that's mostly hydrogen and helium, and then they exploded in these supernova explosions. And then they made these clumps yeah, so uh, the first stars... Not pristine. <laughs> <laughs> not pristine clumps. Yeah, pretty much. Fun. So it took a few hundred million years for the first stars to emerge. Yes. And then they exploded after a few million years. Kaboom. Kaboom. And then it's like, I always consider the universe like a, you know, a nice soup. Mm -hmm. And then these first supernova explosions kind of provided the salt you know, just a little sprinkle of heavier yeah. elements, and that made it really tasty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just changed it completely, right? And that changed the physics of the gas. So that meant that these these gas clouds that were, you know, surrounding the 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 former first stars, they could now cool down and clump and form the next generation of stars that now included also little stars. And um, as I just mentioned, the small stars have these really long lifetimes. The mm -hmm. sun has a lifetime of 10 billion years. Any star that is even less massive will have an even longer lifetime. 
Mm-hmm. So that gives us a chance to to still observe some of the stars that formed back then. So we are testing the the conditions, the chemical and physical conditions of the early universe even before the galaxy formed. So what's the timeline that we're talking about? What is the age of the universe and what is the earliest time we got those salty, delicious soup, clump soups <laughs> with heavier elements? Well, the universe is 13.8 billion years old. Allegedly, yeah. Um, is it yes. so, <laughs> okay? Thirteen. <13. laughs> well, you know, when I was in high school, the universe was twenty billion years old. <laughs> oh yeah. So the estimate <laughs> do, do, have changed. Do you think that estimate will evolve in interesting ways, or no? Is that is it pretty stable at this point? I think we have mostly converged. Yes, because the techniques are are very different now, much more precise. Um, the whole business of precision cosmology by mapping out the cosmic microwave background, mm-hmm. you know, that that's a marvelous feat. Um, Maybe, you know, the digits will still move around a little bit, but that's all right. So. Plus the gravitational waves and all that. Yeah. So all the different sources of data. Yeah. Kind of yeah. mapping out this detailed picture of the yeah. early universe. Yeah. Totally. And so we think the earliest little stars formed, I don't know, maybe half a billion years after the Big Bang, right? Again, a few mm-hmm. hundred million years for the first stars to emerge. And then, you know, took some time. So give or take half a billion years. And um, that was the time when sort of the very first proto-galaxies formed, early stellar structures, stellar systems from which the Milky Way eventually formed, right? So it was, the Milky Way is probably a, a bigger, slightly bigger one. And we know today that galaxies grow hierarchically, which means they eat their smaller neighbors. So if you're the bigger one <laughs> and have a few <laughs> few friends around, you're just going to... Um, eat them, absorb them, and then you grow bigger. And um, so all these these little early stars, you know, kind of came into the Milky Way through that kind of process. And that's why we find them in the outer parts of the galaxy today, because they're just kind of, they've been just left there since. So the old stuff is on the outskirts of the galaxy and the new stuff is in closer to the middle? Is there? Broadly speaking. Okay. Yes. 